jazz for jetliner here's our drawing now what I've started doing is um, the backdrop's going to be the dark sky the thing about the jetliner is the airliner with jets is that it travels enormous distances because of its fuel load it travels at great speed because of the powerful the relatively small and very powerful engines and it travels above the weather. Look at this, even the furthest reaches of the weather um, can be escaped by the power of these jets, so they fly high up in the air. So what I've started doing down here is I've started making this um, popcorn clouds. There you go, you're starting to get the impression here, you can sort of see it starting to happen, especially with the light on it. Light works beautifully on this. See I'm reaching out there? It's starting to look like thunderheads. I'm thinking monsoon here, so um, let's just take this backdrop away for a moment. What I'm thinking is... Now, the best thing I could do is rotate this and have a look at how it's happening. So, I've got my backboard, and this is a hollow core. I'm spanning it with bits of foam and then chipping Pulling bits off, replacing them somewhere else. It's like a replacement technique. So I'll pull a bit off here. This is a bit high because this is further away. I want this to be smooth and I want it to be built up in structure as it comes forward. So that's what I'm doing now. So the idea is to build it up. I'll show you how that goes. So what I do is I break it up so that it doesn't look smooth anymore. I keep the small pieces because I need those for sculpting the other bits. I've got the hot glue gun on and primarily what I'm trying to do is get that in there. I want a nice smooth curve at the back remember because that's getting further away from us. So I must start by placing pieces in so that bit's going in there. I'm having a lot of trouble with strands. The strands. So it's like sort of, yeah, it's the popcorn technique, hey? See how it gets that lovely structure? It's got a great structure to it. And this stuff that's on the ground I'll use, I mean... Blue's, blue's a lot of trouble, the hot wax is being troublesome. Two pieces. The more the merrier. We might stick that whole thing in there. Can you see through? Right side phones. You hear that? I okay, think that's a DC3. Heavy drain. Beautiful sound. There's people having joy flights in a DC3 which is pretty cool, we're well, not seeing anything, so what I'm doing is more of this, come back in a minute and have a look so we get the glue gun, which um, I've managed to burn my fingers with this week probably three times, I haven't done that for ages, but now I have and it really hurts so So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try and get a good base layer under there. I think that might help things a lot. So look, it's more, yeah, so it's, yeah, this is the popcorn technique. Here you go, this is what it's about. Making popcorn. 
making popcorn as much as possible. And what we do is put the popcorn in. There it goes. Fill the gaps. But you have to find the right spots and then you get this sort of like lovely flowing sort of look. Fill the gaps. That's what you do. So it's kind of tricky because you've just got to find the right pieces or break, stick them in and break them off. See, I've got a, um, I've got a little V channel there where the straight cuts are coming in. Jimmy, my son was reading the letters over here, O2, I might leave a couple of those. Love the idea of it being of nothing. basically just trying to roughen up that surface so I can get a large panel in which will make a big difference. It's got to be, the trouble is it's too regular, have a look at it, this just looks like it's been, um, it's more like granite doesn't it, but it doesn't matter. That gives me a good basis. I'll reuse all this stuff. So um, what I'll do is I'm going to go in around there. You can probably see from that angle it's starting to look okay. It's not perfect. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Good enough. Good enough for jazz. Good enough for clouds. I've looked at clouds. I've looked at clouds from both sides now. From up and down and still somehow. It's clouds illusions, I recall. I really don't know clouds at all. So I'm starting to fill it in. We're almost there, I guess. I've got this last patch, this last patch here to fill in. I've got the um, the monsoon clouds coming out, nice and high. I've built a base for the monsoon cloud, which is a core of foam. And what I'm doing now is I'm just filling in gaps. I'm running out of large foam, which is a bit of a problem. I didn't realise I was going to use so much foam on this job. I was trying to get in there. Nice. The shadows are looking beautiful anyway. I've got to fill these things in here. You can see down here, see those gaps? That's what I'm aiming at. So what I do is... I guess I'm getting um, just anything. And what you try and do is stop the shadows, whatever the gap is. You just sort of like fill it in. With those bits of um the trouble is with the wax on any other surface it just seems to dry and stick with this it seems to melt the wax and it melt the um foam and it takes a while for the foam to re to reconstitute itself so okay there we go what i'm going to do now is i'm going to try and um just fill up some of the gaps I'll just fill some of those gaps and I want to fill this gap along the back here. See this, I want to make that nice and smooth. And what I'll be doing is I'll be putting a new piece of um putting a new piece of foam in that should finish it off there. Just use this to fill in those gaps. Make sure it goes right in there. What I need is a smooth transition to the um, from the backboard. Oh, 
That's pretty good. That give you an idea. I'll just fill in some of these front gaps here. It's a bit hard to see because it's all white. But so I'll just sort of use this to fill in those gaps. Now all I have to do is fill in that last gap here. You see back there? Just filling in this last gap. I'll show you how that goes. I'll chip this piece off. This piece of foam that represents a good stagger of clouds. Use the hot glue gun. I get a good strip of glue along the back. There you go. Now what I do is I slide it into place so that it smears the um, wax evenly and creates a film rather than some lumps. I lift it up. Probably hear it chatting. Yeah. And you can see that I've only got a couple of gaps to go. Now it looks like it's going to attach, but you never know with this stuff. It can let go. Have a look. I've got some plans for a jumbo here and what I'm doing is I'm just starting to build it up out of bits and pieces. You can see I've got the tail planes in, they're made of acetate, they're just cut with scissors and I've got a slightly thicker piece of plastic as the body but you won't see it because it's going to be angled like this. So This is the start of the jumbo, what I'll do now is I'm drawing out the wings. I've got a plan drawing, oh, you can't see it. And that's what I'm using to create the um, jumbo. So now the wings, I'll be doing the wings, drawing them out. And okay, we've got the engine pods in. They're just flat pieces of plastic. Look, if I look at it from the back, there's not much to it. I've got the winglet on. Tail planes in. What we'll do now is we'll paint it so I can get a good look at it. And then I'll, I'll do the other side. Now I haven't thinned this down because it's the first coat of undercoat so what I'll do is I'll try and put it on nice and thickly. I've been thinning down the paint a lot so that it covers smoothly because with acrylic I'm finding it's very lumpy. Very lumpy indeed. So it's coming straight out of the can. Put a nice thick layer of paint on it and what I'll do is I'll sand it off in a minute and then I'll put a final um, paint coat on it. Might have to stick the engine pods on, I'm not sure. I keep thinking if I can leave the engine pods off the other side it's going to save me a lot of time. I've need a good sand along that joint, see that joint there? It's alright in the back bit, but that bit's no good. It's all a bit sort of rough there. So plenty of um, sanding on that, but the winglets turned out nicely. So what I do is I draw out that piece. I'll transfer that onto a piece of plastic. It's tiny stuff, isn't it? It's ridiculous, actually. It's ridiculous. You feel like an elf, like a little cobbler. Or a little elf. So these would be the engine pylons. I can't wait to get this bit done. I have to roughen it up otherwise the pencil won't draw on it and also the paint won't stick to it. So I'll just sort of rough it up. Good thing is it's see-through so what I can do is I can transfer I can 
transfer the pylon onto here. I need two of them, so. It really is a wonderful construction, I must say. Clever people come up with stuff. Because these pylons look like they're you know they look so slender you can't imagine that the sort of strength that they have magnificent construction very clever so what I'll do is I'll cut both of those I'm just following the pencil lines now Look, this isn't really, if, it's, if this was real model building, this wouldn't be good enough. You'd have to measure everything on a template. Um, you'd have to score everything carefully with a knife. This is more replica stuff. It's just to get the look of something. I like it much more. It's much more um, adventurous. And I love the hand painting of them, especially. I'm not you know, there is something artistic about the surface of these creatures. They're like birds. And all the spray painting, while it, I guess you get the much better, flatter, more even paint, it's, um, it just doesn't seem as exciting to me. I love the sense of their streaked, slightly streaked, dirty surfaces. I love the fact that I'm using materials that would just otherwise just go, would be dumped. I like that. It gives me a feeling of fulfilment. It's definitely alchemy. I'm trying to transfer the worthless into the valuable. I understand that about alchemy. Okay, so I've got our pieces. Oh, there we go. One minute left. So, um, as you can see, I've put in those last minute things and started painting the engines. I'm starting to get that 3D sort of look to it. I've got to paint the tail now. 